When we speak about cetaceans, we're talking about animals that 40 million years ago were amphibious uh, and they uh, kind of came into the wall, back into the water and evolved into the dolphins and whales that we know of today. So uh, many of them for the last 30 million years have been so well adapted they haven't been any significant uh, changes in their morphology. We also have two families of cetaceans. We have the mystocetes or mustache whales, the mustache referring to the baleen, which are animals that are like grazing animals. Uh, and then we have the odontocetes or tooth whales, which are the porpoises and the dolphins. Um, in the porpoises and dolphins, we have two different uh, uh, variations. The porpoises have flat teeth and the dolphins have round teeth. So actually a orca is a dolphin. Now we have another tooth whale also called the sperm whale which kind of doesn't fit into the, the uh, dolphin or porpoise category uh, but it has a lower jaw full of round teeth and an amazing sound repertoire. So we're going to talk a little bit about how these animals use sound in the ocean and uh, how they create sounds and how they hear sounds. And quite generally speaking when you're talking about the mystocetes, you're talking about animals that are quite large. The smallest of them, the minke whale, is uh, running about four, four meters. Uh, and the largest, which is the uh, blue whale, can be uh, 20 to 25 meters. So um, these animals being large, uh, they graze a little bit like cattle on krill and uh, they need sounds to uh, communicate over long distances and, uh, and navigate over long distances. So their vocal repertoire and hearing sensitivities, as best as we can determine, is all in the low frequency range. We certainly know their vocal repertoire is low frequency. We're not sure exactly how high they can hear. The adonisites, on the other hand, are pack animals. They uh, hunt like wolves cooperatively, and uh, they hunt larger fish, uh, and they uh, use uh, echolocation in higher frequency realm and we know that they hear as well as produce sounds. Uh, the reason why we know they hear in these higher frequency realms is because uh, we uh, have had them in captivity and have been able to do uh, operant conditioning testing and other types of testing on their hearing systems to determine what in fact they do hear. And as they are pack animals they are convivial, they are given to um, Companion ability, and we know this uh, from all the delightful dolphin interactions, dolphin-human interactions. We are learning that uh, the larger whales are also given to interactivity with humans and others, but they're a little more difficult to keep in captivity because of their size, and also they're not necessarily uh, given to what they call operant conditioning testing. You are not going to be able to shovel in three tons of krill to have them hit the paddle when they hear some sound. So uh, we know a lot about the adontocetes, we know very little about the mystocetes, but what we do know we'll explore in the following chapters on adontocete and mystocete hearing and sound production.